Good afternoon and welcome to another English lesson here with me, Anna English, on English Like a Native. And today we are taking another look at phrasal verbs. So, so far we have done three previous phrasal verb sessions. We are looking at 10 different phrasal verbs every time. I envisage that this lesson will go on for about 25 minutes. It has to finish at three o'clock, so I can't go any longer than that. So let's have a look at another 10 phrasal verbs together. I hope you remember all the previous ones that we've covered. All of these phrasal verbs are important because in English we speak using phrasal verbs all the time. And if you don't know them, they can be confusing, but it can also mean that you uh, miscommunicate if you don't complete a phrasal verb. Hello everyone joining in and saying hi, I hope you're all well. Let's get straight on into it. So I'm going to ask you to do some writing practice. Each time I introduce a new phrasal verb, I want you to try to write a sentence using that phrasal verb. And I will try my best to correct your writing. Not everyone, of course, I don't have time for that, but I'll try and correct all of my patrons who are here in the patron room. And I will also try to correct um, as many of you as I have time for in the YouTube room. Okay, so without further ado, that's what we say when we mean let's go. Without further ado, let's start. So the first phrasal verb today is similar to the last one we looked at, which was ask over. If you ask someone over, then you're asking them to come over to you. But here we have ask round. So if I ask someone round, I generally mean I'm asking them to come to my place, my home usually. So if I say I'm going to ask you round later in the day, that means I'm inviting you to my house or to my work. It depends on the context. And the example sentence I've written here is, we have just moved in. So Nick asked everyone from work round to celebrate. We have just moved in to our new house, I assume. So Nick asked everyone from work round to celebrate. Fantastic. So I'd like you to try and write a sentence using ask round. And notice how we put the object in between. Who did you ask? We asked everyone from work round. So put it in between if you're talking about someone in particular. All right, the next one, while you're doing that, the next one is auction off. Auction off. Now look at how I pronounce this. Or, auk, shun. So we have an SH sound, like you're going sh. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to hit the microphone. I hope that didn't scare anyone. Auk, shun, auction. To auction something off. Now, if you don't know what an auction is, an auction is like a big sale. It's where someone stands at the front and lots of people gather and people want to sell things. So they put things into the auction and the person who is the head of the auction will start off with a starting bid. So they'll say, who wants to pay £10 for, um, who wants to pay £10 for this broken pencil? And someone will say, me. And then he says, okay, do I have 11 pounds? Anyone want to pay 11 pounds? And someone else might say, I'll pay 11. Uh, 12 pounds, anyone? 15 pounds? And the bids go up and up and up until it won't go any higher than it sells to the highest bidder. That is an auction. So if you auction something off, it means you sell it off in an auction. So you auction it off. It's being auctioned off. It will be auctioned off tomorrow. Okay, a little bit more tricky perhaps. So the example sentence I've given here is, we can't believe they auctioned off their beautiful house. I guess they really needed the money. Now the thing is with auctions is normally items will go at a very low price. Rather than the price that you want it for, you want to sell it for, then it will go cheaper. So if you auction off a house, a house will normally sell cheaper at auction than it will if you just wait and let people come and view and say, this is the asking price. This is as much as we want. If you sell at auction, you get a lot less money normally. So we can't believe they auctioned off their beautiful house. 
I guess they really needed the money. Okay. I wonder if my patrons are in. They've changed Skype, so I can't see. Oh, yes, they are. No, they're not. <laughs> I can't see on the new version of Skype who is present, who's online at the moment. So if you are online and you're a patron, then do come and say hello. Um, give me your example sentences and I will correct them. Otherwise, let's look and see if anyone has actually... Yes, they have. So I have Shadi. Shadi has given me a practice sentence and you've used the, the phrasal verb asked round. So let's have a look at what you've written. You've put, my grandfather asked me round as he misses me a lot. Yeah, lovely. My grandfather asked me round as he misses me a lot. And just make sure you do put a full stop on the end of the sentence there. Fabulous. Well done. Okay, any more can I see here? Yes, okay, so Hira has written, um, my sister-in-law asked me round to a dinner at her place. You don't necessarily need dinner, um, a dinner, so you could just say dinner. My sister-in-law asked me round to dinner at her place. That's absolutely fine. Okay. And I'll just do one more here and then we'll move on. And this is from Sumika, Sumika. Sorry if I've mispronounced that. You've put, um, oh, I've missed off I. You've put, I purchased the house as they auctioned their house off. I purchased the house as they auctioned their house off. Good. That works absolutely fine. Very, very good. Okay, wonderful. So now let's move on to the next one. So we've got asked round and auction off. What's next on the list? Okay, so now we move on to B. Yay, that means we've covered all the A's, all the phrasal verbs you could possibly find. Although I'm sure there's possibly one or two more, but this is a complete list. So as far as I'm concerned, we've covered all the phrasal verbs beginning with A. Good job. Now we're going to move on to B. So the first phrasal verb beginning with B is the phrasal verb back away. Back away. So the example sentence I've given for this one, which means to move backwards or retreat, I think it's quite straightforward. Or backwards, rather. <laughs> But the example sentence is, my son backed away from the barking dog. So normally you would back away from something because you're fearful of it or you don't want to go near it for some reason. My son backed away from the barking dog. Okay, lovely. And then the next one is back down back down. If you back down, and this goes over the page, you retract or withdraw your position in an argument. So if I'm standing for something in an argument, if I decide that I perhaps we're in a business meeting about building a big tower and my position is I want to build this big tower. This big tower is going to cost a lot of money. And so my position is I want to spend the money and I want to build this big tower. If I then back down, it means I change my mind or I stop fighting for what I want. So I just stop fighting. I, I almost take a metaphorical step backwards. I think that's probably enough explanation. Hopefully that's clear. Um, the example I've given here is, I think my husband was too hard on the kids, but he is so stubborn I have asked him to reconsider the children's punishment, but he won't back down. So here we're saying my husband is too hard on the kids. This means he's too, um, he disciplines them too strictly. Maybe he's too strict with them, um, too harsh with them. So I think my husband was too hard on the kids, but he is so stubborn. I've asked him to reconsider the children's punishment but he won't back down. So obviously my husband has punished the children and I think it's a bit too harsh, but he won't back down. He's very stubborn. So let's have a look at some more example sentences from you. So I have my um, patron here. This is Chow. Chow has said, let's have a look, get you up on the screen. Chow has said, um, John asked his friends round to his dinner party. 
John asked his friend round to his dinner party. Perfect. Very good. And I have um, Adele has written in the, in the, um, <laughs> what's the word? In the YouTube chat room has written this sentence. He was dead set against the new regulations. Then he backed down. Okay, so this needs a capital letter. He was dead set against. Um, this phrase means completely. If you're dead set against something, it means that you won't change your mind. You're, you're firm in your decision. He was, so I could say, I'm dead set on, I'm dead set on um, providing as many English lessons as I can, or I'm dead set on being a full-time YouTuber for the rest of my life, or... Mm, yes, I can't think of any other examples off the top of my head, but to be dead set is to be firm in your decision. He was dead set against the new reg regulations, but then, so something happened afterwards, then he backed down. Strange. Okay, very good. Um, oh no, what just happened? <laughs> I deleted too much. Okay, let's do one more and then we'll move on to that next one there. Um, okay, we've got one here that's quite interesting. This is Samika again. Samika has written this sentence. He backed down to struggle as he lost all his hope in life. He backed down to struggle as he lost all hope in life. Okay, I see what you're trying to say. I think you're trying to say that he, he gave up struggling. I think gave up would be the better phrasal verb there, to give up. He gave up struggling as he had, as he had lost all, I would just put all hope, not all his hope. It's not necessary. We know we're talking about he. So it's he and his, it's not necessary. As he had lost all hope in life. He backed down to struggle as, as he had lost all hope in life. Um, he... I would, you could also say gave in would be another phrasal verb that would work well with that. He gave in to struck, no, he gave in to, no, that wouldn't work actually. He, I would just say he backed down. Perhaps in a previous sentence you would say that he, he no longer struggled. Or he was struggling, then he backed down. So you could put he struggled. and fought for the things oh, he believed in. But then, then, oh, later in life, maybe, later in life, he backed down as he had lost all hope. And we don't want to repeat the word life. So that would be a better sentence. He fought, he struggled. Oh dear. He struggled and fought for all, for the things he believed in. Later in life, he backed down as he had lost all hope. And I would actually make that a full stop. And that one a capital, a different sentence. Okay. All right. So let's move forward. So the next one we can see is back into. To back into something is literally to reverse park a vehicle. So you could reverse on a horse, you could reverse in a car or a truck or a bus or on a bike. But normally if you say just back into there, I'm asking you to reverse park. Sometimes it's not necessarily for parking. It might be just you need to turn around. So I'd say back into the road you can see at the side or back into the driveway and then you can pull off to the, um, to the side. Yeah, so back into, I think that's quite straightforward, <laughs> or backwards, <laughs> make that joke again. So uh, the example sentence I've given here is, just back your car into the space marked flat 43. Just back your car into the space marked flat 43. Okay. Great. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, my patrons are very quiet. Patrons, come on, write some example sentences. Let me let me help you. Um, oh, okay, Fernando is typing now. I look forward to seeing what you're going to write, Fernando. Um, just so you know, 
Um, anyone who is a patron at some point is going to get all of this list. Uh, patrons, I know I haven't uploaded any notes to you recently, but all the notes from all the lessons that I've done um, over the last few months will be available on the Patreon page for patrons. So patrons, just bear with me. I know I owe you some notes. They are coming. Plus, you will get the copy of all these notes that I'm writing up. Um, during these lessons as well. And if anyone is interested in becoming a patron, there are many rewards, not just free as, um, access to the notes and some ebooks as well, but you also get to join the Skype chat room so that I see all of your messages. Um, you get to message me and get a response because I know sometimes it's hard to get a response from me because there are just so many messages and so many comments that it's almost impossible for me to answer everybody. But patrons will always um, get that extra special little bit of attention. So if you are interested in helping this community, helping me to provide as much education as I possibly can, then um, consider being a patron and the link will be in the description box below. Okay, so what have we got here? I've got Fernando is still typing. Okay, let's move forward then. Um, so we got back off. If someone backs off, it means they retreat. So I might shout at you and tell you, hey, back off. That means I want you to just leave me alone or move physically away from me. So here the example sentence is back off or I will tell security that you are hassling me. Back off or I will tell security that you are hassling me. All right, nice and easy. So let's have a look at some examples. Fernando, Fernando has said, um, I'm not watching you. I'm doing other tasks with the computer, but I'm listening to you at the same time and I like it. Okay, Fernando, I understand. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here listening. Okay, so let's have a look at some of your example sentences then. Um... Okay, here's an interesting one from Shadi. Shadi has written, amateur drivers always have trouble backing their vehicles into narrow spaced stops. So all you need to write here is just get rid of that and write narrow spaces. Amateur drivers, and we actually call them learner drivers. I knew exactly what you meant but this is the correct phrase for people who haven't yet got a driving license. Learner drivers always have trouble with, and you could actually lose this, always have trouble backing their vehicles into narrow spaces. There you go, perfect. Okay, so that works well. And then I have another one here, which is from Abirami. I'm sorry if I've pronounced that incorrectly, but let's have a look at yours. I've got a dent in the front of my car as my neighbor's car backed into mine. Perfect. Very good. Okay, let's move forward. We've got less than 10 minutes to get through to the end. So, um, what have we got next? So we got back off. We already covered that one. That was quite easy. Um, so if someone tells you to back off, then I would suggest that you take a step back because they're obviously feeling very uncomfortable. But then we have back out. Now, if you back out of something, it means that you fail to keep your arrangement or your promise. So if I promise you that I will bring you a lesson every day at four o'clock, which I did do recently, and then I am unable to do that, you could say that I backed out. Anna's backed out. Anna was going to provide lessons every day, but she ended up backing out. Um, and I will explain why at the end of this lesson. <laughs> but let's continue with that phrasal verb. To back out is to fail to keep an arrangement or promise. We were about to sell our house, but the buyers backed out. So we will have to put the house back on the market. If something is on the market, we talk about properties being on the market. So the housing market, a house will be on the market. Um, it just means it's, that's where it gets sold or that it's up for sale. We are about to sell our house, but the buyers backed out. So we will have to put the house back on the market. Now, um, 
Quite simple, but then we see we've got back out of, which means the same thing. So when do we use of and when do we not use of? Well, it, what I realize is if you could put a full stop here and end, end the sentence with back out, then you don't need of. We were about to sell our house, but the buyer's backed out, full stop. Um, if you were to say, we were about to sell our house, um, you, if you could say, we were about to sell, but the buyer's backed out of buying our house, if you're going to continue the sentence, then you need of. I don't think that makes much sense, but let's see if we can figure it out further down. Back, to out, back out of also means to reverse out. So we're going back to driving, reversing your vehicle. But let's have a look still at this idea of back out of versus back out. I was warned that he might back out of the investment at the last minute. I was warned that he might back out of the investment at the last minute. So this is very similar to this. So you could put it here. We were about to sell our house, but the buyers backed out. I was warned that he might back out of the investment at the last minute. Yeah. So if you are putting, if you're putting what it is they're backing out of after the phrasal verb, then we need of. Okay. Let's see if you can write a few sentences and see how, how we get on with that. And then with reversing out to back out of, the example sentence is, Sarah had a little accident while backing out of her driveway this morning. Nice and easy. Sarah had a little accident while backing out of her driveway this morning. Perfecto. Okay, so um, let's have a look at one example sentence that I've got here from UF. UF has written this sentence. I was going home early today, but my customer suddenly came to my office at six o'clock. So I backed out. Oh, so you backed out of going home early. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit odd. There are better ways to write it, but it makes sense. I was going home early today, but my customer, but my customer, um, it's very specific if you say my, so I'd say a customer. If you're not expecting them, it's a random customer. I was going home early today, but a customer, a customer suddenly came, I want to say into here, suddenly came into my office at six. So I backed out. Yeah, okay. Okay, that works. Well done. Um, all right, let's move on. So the next one is back up, to back up. If you back something up, then you make a copy of it for safekeeping. In fact, I want an extra space there. You make a copy of it for safekeeping. So normally people will make a backup of all of their important documents. Obviously, if you're writing something for an, an essay, perhaps for your college or university project or for school, or if you're doing an important report, then you'll make a backup. So you make a copy in case something bad happens to the original copy. Um, backup can also mean to support someone, to support your friends or your family or someone, a client perhaps, you might give them support. Or backup can mean to reverse, so you would back up your car if you were reversing your car. So let's have a look at some examples. So to make a safe copy, here is the example. I was working late last night writing my novel when my computer went haywire. If something goes haywire, it means it goes crazy. All my files corrupted and unfortunately I didn't make a backup. Therefore, I lost everything. Oh no. I think everyone can relate to that. All right, the next one when backup means support. Here is the example. You can count on your friends to back you up the next time you are wrongly accused of cheating. So imagine the teacher stands up and says, hey, you, you were cheating on that test. You'd say, honestly, I, I wasn't cheating. I promise you, sir, I wasn't cheating. And my friends can back me up. My friends will support me and tell you that I wasn't cheating because my friends know. My friends were with me the whole time. Okay, so my friends backed me up. They gave me support. And then finally, to back up the car, 
oh I didn't write this in capital letters let me just change this back up I am sure we missed the turning can you just back up so I can see the street sign so imagining we've just driven past the street sign and I've said can you just back up so we can see the street sign please <laughs> Okay, and the last one is to bail out. So bail out has three meanings. A, to save or rescue, to bail someone out if they need help. B, is to stop doing or being involved with something. I'm going to bail out because I don't want to do it anymore. Or C, to bail out, which is to jump out of a plane with a parachute. So bail out meaning to save or rescue. Mum, I need you to bail me out. I agreed to go to Danielle's Hendu. A Hendu is a party for a bride before she gets married. I agreed to go to Danielle's Pendu, but I really don't want to. If I tell her, then she will fall out with me. That means she will be very angry with me. And we won't be friends anymore. Okay? So, Mum, I need you to bail me out. Bail me out. Uh, the second one, B, meaning to stop being involved with something. The plan was to stay here and help clean up the mess until the house was spick and span. Spick and span means really clean. But everyone, ex but everyone except me bailed out as soon as they heard the ice cream van. So in the UK, when an ice cream van arrives on the street, it plays music and everyone runs out in the, into the street to buy ice cream. Not at the moment because it's really snowy and cold here. Um, but if you hear the ice cream van, people run out. And so here people have backed, bailed out of helping me with the house because they heard the ice cream van. Typical. Okay. And the last one is, if the engines fail, and we're talking to a pilot here, if the engines fail and you can see no, alter no alternative, then simply bail out and parachute to safety. Da 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 da. Okay, fantastic. I hope I explained that clearly. Um, I'm sorry if I've rushed it a little bit. Um, we have got to the end of the time that I have to speak to you because I now have another appointment for some freelance work that I need to do. So um, I, I did say that I would explain why I'm not doing the four o'clock lessons at the moment. Now, the reasons being, I had intended to do a new lesson every day at four o'clock on weekdays. Um, but unfortunately I've had, um, I've had, a, I've had a, a bit of trouble. Um, <laughs> how do I put this? Okay. So, um, my normal streams of income have, um, changed. And so I've had to now take on some extra freelance work to keep things on an even keel. Um, and so when I'm doing freelance work, it just takes up a lot of my time. And so I have been finding it difficult to make sure you've got enough material to have a new lesson every day at four. So um, for now, it's no longer going to be every day. I will still bring you about three or four lessons a week, but I can't guarantee it'll be every single weekday. So you'll just have to kind of keep tapping in to find out when the new lessons are, okay? And if any of you are interested in supporting and becoming a patron, that will really help. The more patrons I have, the less freelance work I have to do and the more time I can dedicate to providing you with education. Um, and before I go, I will just tell you that there is a fantastic um, plugin for those of you who use a desktop computer or a laptop. There's a fantastic plugin called Grammarly. It's free. I use it. There's there's no kind of catch 22 with this. It's a free plugin. There is a pro version, but you don't need to use that. This plugin, once you've got it plugged into your computer, onto your um, Safari, um, it will basically grammar correct you and spell correct you everything you write. And it's for me, I'm dyslexic. So for me, it's it's really, really helpful because I make spelling mistakes all the time and grammar mistakes sometimes. So it's really, really helpful and it's free. And the link is just down below there. I think everyone should have this. There's no reason not to. It's extra help. It'll help you to learn. And yeah, and you're not paying anything for it. So go and download it and get started. Um, and if anyone knows of any other things that are really good, then let me know about it. I'm always interested in uh, resources that can help everybody.
Okay, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you again soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gotta go. Bye from London. <laughs>